All right, welcome back to the Central Valley Buzz, everybody. I'm your host, Chuck Leonard. We got a big political race going on in Fresno, and one of my favorite ones to keep my eye on is always District 1. Let's bring in, running for District 1, Carrie Catalano. Carrie, how's it going? It's going great, thank you. Nice to have you. I've, been, you. I've been waiting to have you, and I think uh, you, I got you here at the right time. You sure did. We are five days away, and I'm excited about Tuesday. I bet, I bet you are, because you've been out there hitting it hard, haven't yeah. you? Yeah, I started walking August 10th. We've knocked on a little over 10,000 doors, and it's been a really amazing experience. I think what the District 1 residents don't really know is how large our district is. We right. start right here in the Tower District. We go up to Shaw Avenue. We go west of 99 to Shaw and Hayes. We encompass most of Central Unified School District, and then we dart all the way back down into the Tower District, a very large geographic area to cover in a campaign. Well, 10,000 doors, doors is a lot of people. What have you been hearing from the people? Well, I've been hearing quite a bit. I think uh, people are very optimistic about our future after five years of a deep recession in our local economy. People feel that now that the city's budget is stabilizing, they're really interested in knowing what their next council member is going to do to really tackle some of the kitchen mm -hmm. sink items, such as how are you going to repair my streets? my sidewalks, how can we help the police department be more responsive to our immediate needs. We understand that they have a significantly reduced staff, but what is your plan to rebuild this department so we feel like we matter to the city as well. So it's a real interesting, folks have been really great. Number one, they understand that the city is doing the best it can, but they really want a clear vision of what the future holds for them and our community. Do they want a more visible council member than what we've had in the past? Uh, yeah, Recent I should pass, I should say. You know, I, I think that it's difficult being an elected official when you're dealing with a, a, compress, a compressing economy. You have had a deep recession. They do want to hear from their leaders. Uh, they want to hear from their council members. They want to know what they're doing with the city's money. And yes, they absolutely want their council member to be visible, not in just one area, but throughout the community. I think what's really essential is the Tower District versus the residents that live closer to Fig Garden Village versus those that live west of 99, all the, all the needs are uniquely, they're just different. Mm -hmm. And they need a council member that understands those unique uh, issues that are faced in their community. They need the council member to be visible. And what the public has really been saying, look, we want to participate in the solutions in our in our neighborhoods, but we need to be asked, mm -hmm. and that's what they're seeking from their next council. That's the member. same in li a lot of things in life, though, right? It really if you, is. If you ask, a lot of times you you, you get, you, and you'd be surprised how much you get. Yeah, you know, I always say, take me along for the ride. You know, let me understand your vision. Ask me to participate, but make sure you take me along with you because you can't expect me to be there with you if I don't know what the heck you're doing. Right. And that's real essential for a council member is to take their constituents with them. Now. What made you want to run for District 1? What, what were some of the things that you saw that District 1 needed that you thought you could help in, in the beginning? You know, I, I really thought about this. I think it's no secret that I ran in 2002 for City Council. I was 27 years old. I was very involved. I believe in Fresno. I lived in the Fresno area my entire life. And I really wanted to really give back to the community. And it, since that loss in 2002, and it really said, okay, what do I want to do? So I started my own company, Catalano Finsky. We are a marketing business development firm who helps small businesses and nonprofit really realize their true potential. And what I realized is I can't just be successful in business, I need to give back, and I need to ask the private sector that makes so much money in this community to ask them to participate in solving some of our greatest ills, such as homelessness, uh, poverty, access to higher education. How can we work together to create more jobs in our community? How can we streamline services at City Hall and make government more efficient? And I've been doing that for almost six years as a private resident, as a business owner, trying to bring people, and I've been working on all those issues. And then I said, but I really want to take it to the next level of my community service. And I said, wow, there's so much that's not being discussed at the council level that I mm -hmm. think I could bring value to the city of Fresno. And that's why we've had broad-based support. Uh, I was so pleased to hear on KMJ that Mike Dramanuel and Ray Appleton were uh, encouraged by my candidacy. The mayor has supported me, several of the council members as well. It really is not about party politics. It's about doing the right thing for a half a million people in the city of Fresno and also mm -hmm. for nearly the 73,000 people in our district. You've got to bring people in and not push them out. And that's really what's been happening sometimes in the city of Fresno. 73,000 people in District 1, that's larger than a lot of cities around uh, in, the, in the Central Valley. It is. It's 73,000 people, and people don't realize what that looks like. But when you're walking the neighborhoods, mm -hmm. you absolutely know what it looks like, and you know what people's struggles are, and you know what they love about their city, and you know what they're slightly uncomfortable with. So we have a lot of we have a lot of faith building that we need to do that their local government's working well for them. And that is really what this election is about. 
there are seven of us in this race. And I think there's a clear distinction between me and the other people in this race. I have outlined a clear blueprint after knocking on 10,000 doors. Mm -hmm. I outlined a plan that the residents can feel comfortable with because this is what they told me they needed right. me to address. And of course, I sprinkled in things I wanted to do, but at the end of the day, I work at the pleasure of the electorate. They hire me to do a job, and Tuesday is the decision day of who they will take to the next level of the next phase of the interview. And what are some of the things that you wanted to sprinkle in there? Yeah, a lot of it's economic development. I think clearly the Tower District is essential to me and revitalizing this area. I outlined a business development plan of revigorating in private investment in this area. I think we have a struggle of image, what we want to be when we grow up. We knew what we were in the 90s, but then we, didn't con we did not continue to grow the Are Tower District. Are you talking district. about Fresno as a whole or no, just I'm talking, the I'm Tower? No, I'm talking the Tower District. Mm -hmm. I think it's a distinct area in our community that mm -hmm. brings in people from all throughout the state. They want to stop in the Tower District as see what it is. It is a cultural arts center. We have a beautiful theater. We have some amazing restaurants, but we have struggled to attract really viable businesses that should be here. It's a very unique area. We have beautiful homes. We have a beautiful, we have beautiful mm. schools that are surrounding our area, but there's just been a lack of, of focus from at City Hall and from this council, current council member on the needs of the tower. We I share agree. this area with two council members, but right. we know District 3 generally focuses on downtown and District 1 needs to focus on the tower. I will also this tell is District you, 1's downtown. Yeah, that's right. right. Here. But I also want to say that we can't be remiss that the residents of West of 99, uh, they feel disconnected to the entire community. So I want them to know that I plan to work aggressively with them to make sure that we master plan West of 99. It, you know, I've lived in Fresno all of my life. We used to say, who would ever live West of 99, right? Right. Lots of people do. I do. A lot of people do. And you know that they're struggling from infrastructure uh, issues, amenity issues. Right. They have a great school district, one of the fastest growing in the Central Valley. But we need to let the residents know that they deserve the best. Just like people at River Park, they deserve the best at Woodward Park. They deserve the best that the city has to offer. And that's what I plan to work for over the next four years and beyond. Real exciting. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm real excited to sit here and hear you talk about this because, you know, I've been in the tower for many years myself, and I've, I was here when, it, when everything kind of really slowed down after 1992, and we, we all know what happened then. Uh, and, but I kind of think that there's some things like we used to have the cops walking up and down yeah. the street, and uh, instead of the cops parked out in front of the places with their lights on and everything, and it, it just seems like it was a little bit more mellow then that we had the cops walking down the street than when we have them in everybody's face. Yeah, know, I think, I think uh, really getting back to the basics of public safety is really essential, knowing that when you pick up a phone that an officer will be there. We have been dealing with some compression in the departments. We have reduction of staff in the council. We're going to have to really look at how we can rebuild each department uh, properly, making sure that we're providing the levels of service that the public expects, and we need to do it very smartly. We can't just rush to add you know, 100 new city employees or 200 new city employees. We have to make sure that we're diligent. I still have sidewalks and streets to repair. Mm -hmm. I still have economic development issues that we need to address. We still have mm -hmm. high levels of concentrated poverty that we need to focus on. We still need to strengthen public transportation. All of it takes money. And remember, we have a very small general fund. And we are the fifth largest city in California, but relatively speaking, our general fund is about $290 million. Right. 83% of it goes to public safety. 83 percent. It wow. doesn't leave a lot of room for much else. So we really need to focus on diversifying how we collect revenue, but also I want to work aggressively with the police chief saying, what, is, what do you want your department to look like? Mm -hmm. Here is the public's feedback. I absolutely want community-based policing back. I absolutely want the public to know if your house or if your neighbor's home is being burglarized and you call 911, that you're going to see an officer very quickly. Mm -hmm. You can't ask someone to be a neighborhood watch captain and say, call us if you need right. us, and then no one ever shows up. Mm -hmm. It's a lack of faith in local government that we're dealing with and that we need to let people know that we are really here for you. And once we bring that back to the forefront, people are going to take willing to take a risk with us saying, hey, these folks know what they're doing. Right now, there's a little bit of hesitation that we need to work on. Okay, here's what, here's what we get to do right now, Carrie. Yep. You get to look right at the, ca at the camera right there yeah. and you need to get to tell everybody why they should vote for Carrie Catalano for District 1. All right. Uh, my, my name is Kerry Catalano, and I would be honored to serve as your next council member in District 1. I have lived in the Fresno area my entire life. My roots are deep, and my passion is great. 
There is, no, there is nothing that we can't do together. I believe in our future. I believe in the possibilities. And I believe we come from greatness. It will just take a leap of faith. All of us need to work together. And I bring that broad base experience. And I've proven it after knocking on your door, talking to you about what matters most to you, but also bringing Republicans, Democrats, independents together. It is all of us that need to work together, not politics as usual. All of us need to work together to address economic development issues so we have a brighter future. As your next council member, I promise you this, that I will work hard, that I will be honest, that it will be responsive to your needs, and at times we will disagree. But please know, we do disagree from time to time, but that does not mean we're not working for the embitterment of Fresno. So on June the 3rd, I ask for your vote and your confidence. Thank you. All right, Kerry Catalano. Thank you very much. Thank you very much Thanks for you. coming by. Good luck with everything. I, this is, I didn't know if I was even looking at the right camera, actually. Well, you, you did great, pal. <laughs> All right, we're right. going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back with some of the best presidents you've ever met. You ready? Yes. Bye. My dancing's like, yeah. <laughs>